Hello and welcome back to Space Engineers on the Xbox on the Series X in the wake of the Automatons update and a new hotfix which has been issued today. We are now on version 1.20267 on the Xbox and it's just a few little game crashes and a few other little things that have been fixed. Automatons is the biggest change to Space Engineers for a while and is part of what used to be called Grid AI. Automatons seeks to change the way that we approach grid design in terms of our drones and seeks to give us more tools and more tricks to be able to make these drones and grids do what we want without having to learn complex amounts of scripting. So to get right into this update and what we get with this, and this is the free update if you want to see what's in the paid DLC, then you can look at my other video, which I will leave a link in the description, as I will leave a link to Marek Rose's dev blog for the game, which also has links to all of the patch notes and the fun stuff. But I'm going to go through the free content that got added to Space Engineers with this Automatons, formerly Grid AI, update. So to kick off, we have five AI blocks. We have our AI flight move block. And if you look, these blocks come in large and they also come in small grid. No need to paste the small grid down. But if you look at them, they have front panels and they have rear panels on these. And they have a right and a left. So you have to place them in the correct position <clears throat> on the grid. Now, don't worry about that too much for this video, because I'll be going over that in detail when I look at these blocks as part of a series of videos on the automaton's features. Then we have the AI basic task block. <clears throat> Along with the flight block, the task block tells your grid to basically do certain things. It's an extended version of your remote control block. You can still use the remote control to remote control grids, but the task block can literally be used as an autopilot and travel to a home destination. And it has original basic behaviors of the remote control as well. Moving on then, we have the AI recorder task block. This is the most versatile of the two between basic and task. Task will let you record set waypoints and actions from the D-pad as you maneuver your vessel around. It's a precision flight path recorder in essence. And it can also be triggered by an event controller. We'll cover the event controller in a little while. We have AI offensive combat, <clears throat> AI defensive combat, excuse me. I had taken a drink before I did this, but it seems that uh, it wants to uh, clog my throat. And then the AI defensive combat. Again, I'll be covering these in more detail as I go into the blocks themselves. Then we have the event controller. Now, the event controller isn't actually on this part of the grid. What is it? Well, again, as you'll hear me say a lot, I'm going to cover the event controller in detail as part of a whole series of videos on automatons. But in essence, it's a way to do things on a grid that doesn't require scripting. If you remember my original airlock video, it required six timer blocks at least to get to work. And it was a little bit fiddly. This requires only one event controller and operates the airlock, locks down the door, opens doors based on a button press and controls the pressurizing and depressurizing of the room and all that good stuff. And here it is, the event controller in large and small grid options. And this device here takes a state of 
your grid, such as door opened, and then basically outputs actions to slot one and slot two. Slot one is true, slot two is false. So if door is blah, then trigger slot one. If door is blah, trigger slot two. So in this case, you can have nine, like um, our timer block, actions mapped to this particular block. In this case, I've got an airlock inner toggle block on off. I have an airlock door toggle block on off and an air vent airlock depressurize on off and also a light that turns on or off based on whether or not the door is opened or closed. And that's all you need to make this airlock work apart from a few of the little setups. I will be going through um, how to do that again. Uh, if you want to know exactly how to do it, well, take a poke over at my beta videos and you'll see. But yes, so we have a working airlock. Let's get back out. So that's the event controller. And along with the event controller, that concludes the blocks that are functional in terms of AI and state detection. Next free part of the update are the Willis ducts. You should know why they're named Willis, of course. And so we have interior ducting we can maneuver through and you have variant one and two. You have a lit variant, so you can have lighting and create the alien style flashing lights, a corner, a T-junction, a cap to cap the block or a grate to cap these blocks off, a cross junction and a ramp to allow you to go up and down levels. All right, that's the Willis Ducks. We also have some conveyor caps. These are nice and functional, or rather non-functional blocks that cover your conveyor ports. And they come in three sizes, the small, the medium, and the large grid. And if you own heavy industry, you'll get the conveyor pipe cap as well. And these are decorative only. There is another addition if you buy the um, DLC. Give me a moment while I find it. If you go to the fourth access panel, I wrongly said that the access panel in this regard was cosmetic only, but it isn't in fact cosmetic. You can use it to hide your conveyor ports and also to hide cargo box ports, allowing you to access a cargo box like so, or anything that's behind it. So you can use those. And again, large and small grid variants of these are available but you can only get this if you own the DLC. Then you have some centered armor panels in the additional, or rather increasing the range of armor panels we can use. We can now put them to the center of a block, which will make doing these kind of corridors on the ground made out of these blocks a lot easier, but also ship design for things like spoilers and so on and so forth. If you remember there was a mod I covered on the showcase a while ago, the air vent, full size and slope, 
Well, now there's no need to install a mod anymore. We actually have full-size air vents, both large and small grid. And if you buy the DLC, you get the fan variants half and full-size as well. Added to, we have our wheels, 2 by 2 wheel, finally, and a small 2 by 2 wheel. And if you own the Wasteland Pack, add it to the Wasteland Pack of the off-road 2x2s two and the larger off-road 2x2s. Two twos. Moving on. Another part of this update. Say hello to the small connector now. It was once a small grid ejector. It now functions exactly like a connector. So you can have small grids like this dock with small grids without any issues. And it can also still function as any other connector has an ejection function. This too has the same. So you can still use it to toss out stone or whatever you want to use the ejector part of the uh, grid for. What else is that? Well, there's been some quality of life changes. Let's move up to our favourite, the lovely custom turret controller, which now has the much requested and much needed always aim at sudden feature. And when you have a camera on your grid and it's all connected up like that, your solar panels will track the sun. So, we'll see mine slowly move to follow the sun. No need for scripts anymore. And so, solo players rejoice and multiplayer hosted players rejoice you can now build bases in space with solo tracking good stuff landing gear no longer take control of the grids they're attached to which is extremely useful a lot of the weapon names in fact um various weapons and corresponding ammo names have actually been altered um i will leave the link to this in the description of the video you can find it from Marek's blog. When you read down, you'll see there is a link to the impacted weapons in the changelog itself. They've also updated the combat guide and some changes like the forget target and copy target. Uh, those are gone. They've removed those completely. And we now have a new action, which is called focus locked target. And when you trigger this, turrets will prioritize the target that's currently fully target locked by the player. There have also been improvements to target locking. Turrets can actually see and engage targets that are fully target locked by the player passively, as long as that target is within each turret's maximum range and line of sight. This is going to mean now that your turrets will automatically engage a locked target if that gets within the turret's max range and its line of sight. And of course, it's not already engaging another target. We've also got a grey lead indicator out of weapon range text indicator when you're out of range for the selected weapon and target locking has gone up by 500 meters which means now it's at 2500 meters uh, turrets have been given the cycle subsystem toolbar um, information that now shows the name of the currently selected subsystem and the ui has been improved for turrets so when you manually control one there is now going to be a better new overlay. So that is pretty much what you get with the free update to automatons. A lot of things to play with, including these new AI blocks, which allow us to do a lot more than we could do before without scripting. And, of course, the event controller. When combined with those blocks, you can set up complex behaviours. And the path recorder. 
So just before I uh, sign off on this one, because there will be more videos rolling in over time, I'll just give you a little bit of a demo with my miner here. You'll notice that I've set up a task and a move uh, AI recorder task block and a move block. So what we'll do is we'll get into here and we'll just make sure that our flight block has collision avoidance on. And we will enable our autopilot and our recorded path. And then I'm going to jump out just to prove that I'm not actually controlling this thing. And this is actually being controlled by the AI as the AI works its way around the grid. It's looking for two points. It's looking for its first waypoint, which is set out in front of the dock. And it's also looking for a second waypoint. It's also attempting not to collide with any grids in range until it gets to the first waypoint, which point the waypoint turns off collision detection. And when it gets to the second waypoint, the waypoint turns on the connector and locks it or rather locks the connector so that is the kind of thing you can do basically with the path recorder and the flight move block you can record a complex path with the task recorder that will log a series of waypoints allowing you to precisely navigate your grid from point a to point B. If you're avoiding all the obstacles in the way, you don't need to use collision avoidance. You can literally turn all that off, just leave precision mode on and let the grid get on with it. Great for patrols. Also possible to make a grid come in for a landing on a hangar because you could also use a beacon as a reference point using automatons update so these grids can actually fly back to a moving headquarters. It takes a little bit of doing. I'll be going over all that, though, as I did with the beta, except I'll be doing it for the retail version of the game. Finally, as a last little demonstration, using the AI flight move block and the AI um, offensive block, and the event controller, we can make a homing missile like this one here. We have an enemy over there. And when we turn off the merge block, what happens is that the event controller detects the change state and turns on the AI flight move block on the ship or rather on the missile. So when we turn off the merge block, our missile goes scooting off and the offensive block seeks out the nearest, largest enemy grid and delivers our payload with a bang. And there you go. That is a very quick look at the automatons update for Space Engineers on the Xbox, running on my Series X. And there's much more to come down the line from me. And from Keen Software, this is only the start of their look at what automation in Space Engineers means. Until then, though, look out for my next videos. I'll be covering the event controller and a lot more in the game. So stay safe. Take care. Have fun. Enjoy the game. Play around with these blocks. Learn to play around with the... Don't be frightened of playing around with the settings. And I'll catch you in the next one. Bye for now.